What is the sign of a good decision? It's helping families with autism tell their story and learn they're not alone. Mass Mutual will help you get there. There's these group of kids who are now hitting 13, 14, 15, who very soon are gonna be leaving the educational system and entering the adult world that's already overwhelmed with the demands of people who are in the adult world. As an ever-growing number of children with autism head into adulthood, there is mounting concern about what lies ahead. What many are asking will become of children like Carter. I've worked as a deputy commissioner for the Department of Developmental Services, and I worry about the scarcity of government resources for people who have autism in their adulthood. Many people are simply told, you're not eligible because you don't fit what we consider to be a person with an intellectual disability. After leaving his post as deputy commissioner of the Department of Developmental Services, Fred Misselow began to advocate as an attorney for people with disabilities, like Dan Ryan. I'm thinking about having a job in a faraway place in the Pacific Northwest, like Seattle, Washington, in the forestry maintenance program. I really want to do that out there. Dan's diagnosis is mild to moderate autism. When he was little, the gap between he and his peers was not as large. But now that he's older, there is a significant gap between our son at the age of 21 and a regular 21-year-old man. And it's noticeable, not physically, but you start to have a conversation with him, and very shortly you figure out that um, there is definitely a problem there. Dan right now um, is at Riverview School, which is a residential school. He is there for the prime reason to get him ready for adulthood and to be as independent as possible. Let's continue our tour of the campus while filming. And in here is my room. You can see it's very organized in here, but it's a little bit warm. And I got all my posters here on the wall. X-Men, that's Iron Man, he's Marvel. And that's Batman, the Dark Knight. And I read comics about them, watch movies and TV shows about them, but they only use their powers for good not for evil. When Dan was getting close to age 18, um, we went ahead and had him apply to the Department of Developmental Services for adult services. Well, we filled out all the forms and we were denied because Daniels did not meet the IQ level. Dan has an IQ, you can take several tests through his lifespan, between a 71 and a 74, depending on what test you took. The Ryans appealed the Department of Developmental Services decision to deny Dan's services as an adult. Fred Misselow represented them. The Ryans came to me uh, to help them obtain uh, eligibility for their son uh, for adult services for the Department of Developmental Services. Uh, he had been denied services because his full-scale IQ was one or two points over uh, the 70 uh, cutoff. Consequently, uh, we had an appeal. There was a hearing before a hearing officer. I asked Dan, uh, do you believe in the Easter Bunny? He said, yes. I said, Dan, do you believe in Santa Claus? His answer was the same. 
yet the Department of Developmental Services is saying he still has the intelligence, uh, too much intelligence, in order to uh, be eligible for our services. There's something wrong fundamentally with that picture. Not able to communicate abstractly. He has significant deficits in the area of communication. He has significant verbal difficulties. Now, at hearing, there was no question. Both the Commonwealth's uh, psychologist as well as the expert witness that we brought uh, all agreed that Dan needs services and supports, significant services and supports, to be safe in adulthood. Find the appellant ineligible for service. But because there's this cutoff, uh, he was determined ineligible. Obviously, uh, there is an interest on the part of, of governments to attempt to restrict the pool of individuals, objectively, to uh, who are going to be eligible for services. For the rest of our lives, my husband and I are responsible for our son, which we have no problem doing. However, there will come a time that we will die, and there'll be no one there to help Danny. He wants to work, he can work, and with working will come the requirement to pay some taxes. So here you have somebody who can contribute, who wants to contribute. He needs a little bit from those tax dollars he's paying in. Those tax dollars should be able to help him out in the future. Housekeeping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Housekeeping. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Royce, what about you? You take this back and dust and brush the back and back to this bed. Back to up here. Doug is someone who has always been fascinated with vacuums. Since the time he was three years old, I can picture him with vacuums. I have a Dayton backpack right now. I got the two-piece one that's stuck together, power nozzle. I have the hose and the adapter. Early on, it was an instrument of getting him to talk more because whenever he met someone, he'd want to know, what kind of vacuum do you have? <laughs> and he would remember if he sees someone, I swear, 20 years later, he'll say, oh, I know you have a, you know, whatever type of vacuum. He vacuums 40 hours a week or four days a week, whatever the week may bring. Um, and to be able to uh, do what you really, really, really like to do and get paid for it, and that's pretty cool. And Doug getting a job vacuuming would be like me getting a job drinking beer and watching the Patriots. No. Mom, what are you thinking about? What are you talk guys talking about? My school. Right now, we're talking about our school. What guys at age 31, Doug still school. lives at home with his parents and younger siblings. His family provides a safe place yeah. for him to Same. live yeah, and the supervision he needs. Calm down. Calm down. You know? Can you chill? Yes. It used to be that if you qualified for services or support through the Department of Developmental Services, you could anticipate that you would also be able to obtain future housing support through that same department. Now, with money, being the issue that it is, there is no guarantee whatsoever that you will be able to get financial support to augment moving out um, to some type of non-family living situation. Okay, now, go up to the address bar up here. We're using federal and state funds inefficiently, and as a consequence, people are being told they do, there's no resources Traditionally, Medicaid has funded large institutional settings. And what we know about them is that the outcomes for people are generally not good, and that it's a very inefficient use of resources. As a result, many state disability experts are looking at person-centered planning, which allows individuals with disabilities to use Medicaid funds to live and work in their communities. I was told by our caseworker that I was a single parent, but that my other kids were getting older and that I needed to move on with my life. That I should just let Tomas go. 
just go ahead and pack up Tomas's bags, bring them over, drop them off, and you can go on with your life, basically. And that wasn't okay with us. Tomas is on the autism spectrum. He has an intellectual disability and is nonverbal. He communicates mostly with hand gestures. We wanted to be part of Tomas's life, make decisions with him and on his behalf for his best interest. And I didn't feel like that was what we envisioned for Tomas. Now remember, here comes the ball. There you go. We always wanted him to be a part of the community and have as many choices and opportunities with the community oh, as possible. Get on your flipper. Get on your flipper. People have a right to say what it is that they want in their lives, that, that the things that make them happy, what their hopes and their desires are. Uh, so every good program should have that at its core. In the past, programs for people with disabilities were not designed with these values in mind. The only option for people like Tomas, who need 24-7 care, used to be an institution or a group home. Today, Tomas is able to live in the community and make lifestyle choices at regularly scheduled planning meetings with the staff at a private nonprofit agency called Total Living Concept. We're going to think about what you can do, what you love to do, what your gifts are. We're going to make a list of those things. In person-centered planning, the absolute core concept is a pretty simple one. It's listening. Uh, you listen to a person. You listen to their dreams, their visions. You try to understand those as carefully as you can. Because Tomas had several violent episodes in high school, the Espinosas were considered a family in crisis and funds became available for him to live outside his mother's home with 24-7 care. In Tomas's case, he wanted to live near his family, particularly his grandparents, and, and that became a central point of his planning because their relationships were so close. It's a nice day to go for a walk, isn't it? Yeah. You want some chicken, Tomas? You do want chicken? Tomas shares a two-bedroom apartment with a roommate not far from his grandparents' home. You want more? Disability income from Social Security and a Section 8 subsidy pay Tomas' rent. His roommate lives rent-free in exchange for making sure that Tomas is safe overnight. In the evening, they hang out together. You're going to open your pot? Historically, we've thought people with disabilities needed to go to a place. You know, we've kind of organized these places for people with autism. I can't imagine someone saying, you'll be moving in with five people you don't know. Um, you're not choosing them. Um, you're not choosing your neighborhood. You'll be living there. Wow. Say hi to mm. There it is. <laughs> the the Espinosas were able to take control of where and how Tomas lives. Through person-centered planning, Tomas lives in his own place near his family with a support system around him. <laughs> look at that smile. I think it's worth taking a look at and saying, this is an opportunity for some families that might prefer not to be in that traditional environment, that they can provide a healthy, happy home that looks most like a normally, typically developing person in their mid-20s, and I mean, that's, that's it. What is the sign of a good decision? It's helping families with autism tell their story and learn they're not alone. Mass Mutual will help you get there.